What's up guys? Right now I'm live on Twitch. When this video goes live, you can come hang out by clicking the link in the comments description. And in this video, we'll be going over the new Trials GL, which might just be the best burst DPS weapon in Destiny 2 now. It is a GL with bait and switch on it. A perk that is instantly the best on any weapon for DPS it's on. First with a linear, then last season with a rocket, and now we have it on a GL. So how do you get the same? Well, you have to play Trials and first unlock the weapon it is on the rewards track at rank 10 which took us roughly three and a half hours to achieve along the way we got i think 12 engrams one per rank then i got a few from random drops then once you unlock the weapon you can focus it and hopefully if you do play trials and do this you get a decent one along the way if not you have to go back in and get more engrams but in this video i hope to inform you if it's even worth grinding for or not before you jump into trials so jumping in and looking at the perks in the left column on this weapon there's gonna be really only one i'm gonna show off in this video but if you do get field prep or demo those would be good options but by far the best one left will be envious assassin we just got some buffs this season and just looking at the base mag of this weapon it's six the base reserves is 17 and some of the changes they made this season to this perk is there's no longer a timer on the kills to overflow the weapon you can get kills over time. It's very easy now to fully overflow the weapon. And another buff was that they made it so if you partially overflow the weapon, you can then overflow it further. So for example, with this weapon, the base mag is six, which means it should be able to overflow to 15. So in theory, if you pulled it out and you only have 13 ammo, you could then overflow it more and get up to 15. But with this change, they introduced a bug where once you overflow it once, you can then just overflow it again so therefore the cap isn't 15 like it should be you can overflow it to way higher all the way to the max reserves of the weapon and even if we put on the reserves which will take it up to 19 ammo we can easily overflow it to 19 so i'm pretty sure this is a bug and the highest overflow should be 15 the 2.5 the base mag but when they introduce the ability to re overflow a partially overflowed weapon i think it introduced this bug so right now you can get up to 19 in one mag. So what is there to pair with that in the right column? Well, there's gonna be three damage perks I wanna talk about in this video. First, bait and switch, then full core and explosive light. There are also hatchling and chain reaction for Aglier if you wanna take that route. But looking at the damage perks on this weapon, starting off with bait and switch because it is the new hot thing. Deal damage with all equipped weapons within a short time to give this weapon a damage boost. So looking at that, one thing to note about GL damage, if you don't know, it's tied to your blast radius. The lower is generally better. So in this video, some of the numbers might be off by like a percent too low or too high because obviously I'm testing with whatever I have, which aren't all the same launch options and mess works. But first look at the base damage of the GL, then procking bait and switch. Bait and switch will be a 35% buff to both the impact and the explosion, taking it up to 80.9 thousand, which is quite a lot. So now comparing that to full court, if we look at the notes, this perk is based on travel time and not necessarily distance. So the buff begins once it's in flight for 0.2 seconds and will max out once it's in flight for 1.1 seconds. And it should cap out at a 25% buff to the explosion damage and the impact should stay the same. And if we add that all together at the max range, it's gonna be hitting for 70.4 thousand only a net total buff of 18% because it does not also buff the impact damage and is obviously just way harder to use than any other damage perk. So just don't use full court. And we also have explosive light, the old classic. And since mine does not have spike grenades on it, I'm gonna go ahead and use this one instead, which is also 120. So the numbers should be the same. And looking at damage on Carl, the base ones right here, then with explosive light, which will get up to times six with the base version of the perk. It's going to greatly increase the explosion number, but also reduce the impact number for a net total buff of 43%, a little bit higher than that of bait and switch. But this is where it gets more complicated. Bait and switch is going to be a time-based buff of 35%, while explosive light is going to be a little bit higher at that 43, but only six shots. And this is going to be really relevant when we compare this with Envy's Assassin in the left column. So if we use a combo like that, Envy's Assassin plus Explosive or Bait and Switch, what we can do is overflow the magazine, let's just say to the base reserves of 17, and see how long it takes to shoot off all those shots. 
as you see, it's going to be a lot quicker than you might think, only taking 8.2 seconds, which is shorter than the duration of bait and switch. So with explosive light, only the first six shots will be under the buff, resulting in a total damage output of almost 1.2 million and 143,000 DPS. Whereas with bait and switch, the first shot will not be under the buff, but the next 16 will, resulting in 1.2 three five million total damage i'll put in one hundred and sixty five thousand dps so as you see bait and switch plus envy's assassin is by far the best role on this weapon and results in not only good total damage output but extremely high burst damage and you compare that with something like the zonkis burden the wither horde or whatever to start a damage phase dump all your gl ammo then finish off with let's say envy's assassin fusion or something like that to finish off the boss fight and i'll be making a video on this fusion down the road there's definitely some interesting roles on this one too. Also, it's worth noting that this GL is also Strand, which depending on your build and things like that, this season in particular, there's going to be a few things in the artifact that will buff our Strand weapon damage. One, when one of our allies pick up or destroy our Tangle. Also, if you're playing a Strand subclass and you get ability final blows, it'll give you that 10% Strand buff. Also, if you're using Surges, for example, Strand Surge on a Strand build, and pairing that with a strain primary, you can overlap and get the buff for both your primary and your heavy. So overall, this scene is by far the best GL in the game. Because one, it has Envy's Assassin and the best damage perk in the game. And the only question is, is it worth getting? Well, if you absolutely hate Trials, I would not say it's worth getting. Because at the end of the day, will this allow you to do anything in the game that you couldn't do without it? Probably not. Is it going to be the most optimal thing to use in a few boss fights in the game? Probably. If you're kind of indifferent towards trials like me, I would recommend at least getting to rank 10 and then focusing all the engrams into it and hopefully you get a decent roll. But really, that is just a personal question if this is worth it or not. It is the best DPS GL in the game and will be worth using in some situations. But when it comes down to it, comparing it to the Regnant, which is also 120 with Envy's Assassin plus Explosive Light, as we showed off, this roll that you can craft is only 15% worse than that of the bait and switch. So to you, is that 15% worth grinding for? Anyways, let me know what you think about this down below. The rest of the video might be some gameplay left. Like usual, thanks for watching. Catch us next time.